In this video, we are going to use the NERTS equation to calculate the cell potential at non-standard conditions. And I wanted to remind us from a previous chapter in thermodynamics that we use the change in Gibbs free energy, or delta G, and that was a measure of how spontaneous a chemical reaction is. So a negative value for delta G means the reaction will proceed without outside intervention. And a famous equation that we used quite frequently was delta G naught equals delta H naught minus T delta S naught. So this little circle means standard conditions. So our pressures would be one atmosphere. If we have concentrations, those units would be one molar, and the temperature would be 298 degrees Kelvin. So for non-standard conditions, when we are calculating the change in Gibbs free energy, we use the tabulated value. So this would be the same value we find using the appendix values and the thermodynamic values given in the table. And then this was the corrective term. So this corrects for non-standard conditions. So we could have any temperature. And Q, if you recall, looks just like the equilibrium expression, which is all of the products divided by all of the reactants. But this is at any time during the reaction. So if our pressures or our concentrations were one molar, then whatever this, um, whatever the balanced equation was that we use to determine the value of Q, we would always have one raised to powers in the numerator and one raised to powers in the denominator. So Q would always be one at standard conditions meaning the natural log or the log of one would make this entire term zero. And since we are looking at delta G or the free energy change now for electrochemistry, we saw an equation that relates the cell potential to Gibbs free energy. So we, on the previous video, we worked an example. We could change this to the standard state free energy. And then the cell potential would be the potential that we calculated using the appendix. Remember, E is just the difference between the half cell reaction for the cathode minus the half cell reaction for the anode. And this always results in big number minus small number. So that's kind of an easy math trick there. And since delta G equals negative NFE, we could make substitutions into this equation and Faraday's all the constants that we have the constants we were using the R value and the Faraday's constant and what we're going to do to change from the natural log to the base 10 log, that is a factor of 2.303. We really don't need to know any of this, but if we plug negative NFE into this equation and negative NFE naught into this equation and combine all the consonants, there's no reason to have multiple constants, excuse me, not consonants, there's no reason to have multiple constants in one equation. So if we do all that, we'll get the Nernst equation. And he is very famous for working 
with electrochemistry and developing a lot of theory, but that equation turns into the cell potential, oops, So this would be non-standard conditions again. Would be equal to the cell potential at the standard conditions. Again, we use the appendix to come up with that value. And then combining all of the constants, we get 0 0.0592 divided by n. And this gentleman used the base 10 log instead of the natural log. So this may not look like, this equation doesn't look like this equation. But if we did the algebraic substitution, combined all the constants, then we would end up with the Nernst equation. So N is still the number of electrons transferred during the oxidation reduction process. And Q is still products over reactants. So if we had an electrochemical cell and our concentrations of our metals was not one molar, then the value for Q would change. What's nice about this is the same concept that we used in a previous chapter. If our cell is at equilibrium, basically that means a dead battery. So at equilibrium, Remember that delta G, Gibbs free energy, was equal to zero. So that means the reaction would not be spontaneous in the forward or the reverse direction. And when we use the non-standard conditions, we were able to solve for the equilibrium constant, which is helpful. So when we rearrange delta G equals delta G naught plus R T L N Q, but Q at equilibrium, Q is equal to K, and at equilibrium delta G is also equal to zero. So if we rearrange this equation, we get RT natural log of K, and this is the equilibrium constant K. So we could solve for K, it would be E raised to the negative delta G naught divided by RT. So this ends up being a very useful equation. In fact, E raised to the negative delta G over RT if you go on in chemistry, you will see that term quite often. And recall a negative delta G is spontaneous. That also means that the value for K is going to be considerably larger than 1. Because a large value for the equilibrium constant means that there are more products in that ratio than there are reactants. So that means the equilibrium favors products, which is what we like because then we make a profit. So a large value for K means the reaction proceeds to the right more than it proceeds in the reverse direction. So we'll use that same concept now with the Nernst equation. And again, the Nernst equation it's hard to say with all those consonants. The cell at non-standard conditions would be the standard state potential minus 0 0.0592, oh, I forgot the unit not the last time, that's volts, divided by 2, and the log base 10 of Q.
in a video that I'll make next will actually plug values in and calculate for this. But again, equilibrium, EQ in electrochemistry means we have a dead battery, that electrons are no longer being transferred, and that would mean the E for that cell would be zero. So if we plug that in for here, zero would equal E naught minus 0 0.0592 volts divided by, shouldn't have put two, usually the number of electron transferred in the examples I've been using is two. So N is the number of electrons transferred and then at equilibrium Q has the same value for K. So we make that substitution. So if we rearrange this equation to solve for K, then E naught is positive 0 0.0592 volts divided by N log K. If I want to solve for the equilibrium value for an electrochemical cell, I just look up the appendix values and do this calculation, rearrange the equation, and so that means, I better not do that in one step, log K is equal to E naught times N divided by 0 0.0592 volts. So if I get log K by itself, I multiply both sides of the equation by N, I divide both sides of the equation there, except I don't think I did that right. And yeah, I guess I did. And then to get rid of the log, I put a 10 underneath both sides so we could calculate the equilibrium expression or the equilibrium value would be 10 raised to the product of the E cell times the number of electrons transferred by divided by 0 0.0592. And that would give us the value for the equilibrium constant.